I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and thank you for joining me today. The Eclectic team and I had a wonderful time at the Melbourne Paperific Expo last weekend, but as you can hear, it's left me with not a whole lot of voice, but I still wanted to present this card to you. So we'll see how we go. So today's project is following on from a recent one that I did with Miranda and the Elegant Jewelry set. So this time I wanted to show you how to use the Elegant Accessories and I'll be teaming them up with Ashley. Now the Elegant Accessories, it's not tricky to use, but because you have to do some masking, it's not quite as straightforward as the jewelry set. But anyway, let's play along and see what happens. Okay, so the stamps that we're using, we've got Ashley, Ashley's closer, and then the Elegant Accessories set. So you can see it's got the headband, the bow, and the neck scarf, all are open images that need to be masked to be able to work effectively. Some of the other ones, like the feathers and the droppers, are more a silhouette, so you can stamp those without the masking. Okay, that'll make sense as we go along. So our ink pads are going to be mostly uh, the Catherine Paula Buttercream, because we want something very soft, plus Versafine Claire Nocturne. And then for colouring, we'll have in the Versa Magic. Sahara Sand, Pink Petunia and Jumbo Java and they'll be applied with the number 10 and number 8 future brushes. And then also we'll bring in some Pentel markers and probably a little bit of a water brush just to blend them. Okay, so let's get playing. So I've got Ashley loaded up in my stamp platform but I'm just going to stamp her first with the buttercream. Now this is because I need to see where she is so that I can place my elements. But I don't want to stamp her in black yet. Um, if I just put a mask on, let me grab the mask. If I put a mask on for the bow, I don't know where, I might be putting it over her eyes or something. So if I stamp her a little bit, I can see where to place my small stamps. So let's just ink the top of her hair, her eyes and her neck. So this could be done with another ink, uh, just as long as you maybe stamp it off on a bit of scrap paper first, if it's not as soft as this one. So can you see, that just gives me a little bit of a guide. So now I'm going to come in with Nocturne and my smaller stamps on a smaller block, and we'll bring our elements in. Just make sure I've got that one on the block properly. Okay, so this one is going to go around her neck that way. So I've stamped Ashley fairly high on the card to allow room for the tails, for these taily bits on the neck scarf. So let's ink up with our Nocturne. Now I'm not using the stamp press for this because I want to leave Ashley loaded. So that means I've got to be lovely and accurate with my block. So I'll just line that up with the edges of her neck. Press down, hold it for a moment. Make sure I've pressed on the whole image. Then lift up. Excellent. Now I'll get the bow. So I could be using the headband or the bow, but I decided on the bow today. If you go onto our Facebook page, you can see some samples of both Ashley and Miranda done with the headband. Um, it works really well. The process would be the same, except here I'm going to be positioning the bow in her hair the headband, you position it from her forehead and it then disappears into the hair. Okay, inking up. So I'm thinking across there. Now hopefully it's starting to make a little bit more sense to you now. So now we get the masks, and we mask the necktie. And I'm just trying to see my mask of the bow there, which I had in my hand a moment ago. There it is over there. It doesn't help to put things down where you're not expecting to find them. Okay, so those are positioned. Now we can ink up Ashley with our Versafine Clear Nocturne. And I'm 
I'm just going to spin my platform around this way so I'm not trying to push over the ring binding of my mat there. And I'll get my Stamp Baron tool. A nice push over the image. Lift up and check that I'm dark enough. And I'm not. I'm not dark enough around the bow or the eye there. So let's just do a little bit more of an inking. So it's this area over here that's not so good. And this time I'm just going to press down mainly on those areas. So just make sure I'm pressing right in the middle there. And around, because the mask is there, you've got to press a little bit harder around the to make sure that the stamped image comes right up to that masked image. Okay, now that looks much better. Let's lift her out, pop that to one side. Okay, so now I can lift off those masks and now it will make sense. So by stamping them first, we haven't got the hair going over the top of them. By stamping the necktie first, it's disappearing in underneath her neck. Now if you look very closely, you can see where I stamped the buttercream first. Um, but by the time we've coloured that, that little bit will cover. So that's how we actually position them. As I said, if I was doing the headband, that would go from her forehead across into her hair. If I was to stamp with some of the feathers, which I've got hanging around here, and this is going to start to look messy because it's going to get... As Joe Rice would say, I'm making a pizza here and we're stamping too much on. But I just want to show you how the feathers work so you can see the difference between these open elements and the silhouette ones. So if I grab this, it can come from in her hair. And see that goes over the top of the other images. So it doesn't need to be masked. Definitely overdoing it now. So yes, if you're going to do it with the feathers, don't worry about the masking. Now, <laughs> I've actually prepared one earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, where I've coloured her skin tones already. We do have several other tutorials on YouTube and I just dropped that on the floor, so excuse me while I disappear out of screen for a moment. There she is. Okay, so I've already done the base coloring and for this I've used the Sahara Sand for her face, the Pink Petunia for her blush and her eyes, and the Jumbo Java for her hair. But as I was saying, if you go onto YouTube, you can see quite a few tutorials showing how to do the foundations on Ashley. Today I wanted to be focusing more on these elements, the um, elegant accessories, and so we've skipped ahead a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use that in, uh, acrylic block there as a palette. So let's grab, uh, what have I got here, turquoise for her eyes. So I'm just using the very tip of the brush so I can get right into those small areas. And I want to mix so that we can do some shadows on that scarf there and the bow. I'm going to do them mostly in pink, but I want to mix a little bit of sepia. I'll bring this up on there so you can see it a bit better. A little bit of sepia to create a more plummy tone just to be able to do a little bit of shadowing. Let's just do her lips first. So to the end of that lip and then I just join it up with that one and grab my aqua brush. Just make sure when you're doing this that you don't go anywhere near that outer edge because the colours will bleed. Okay, all right now 
let's go to the bow. So mostly pink. Now you can do it all in one colour. You can do it with, I've done ones with polka dots on them. You can do it in multiple tones. I'm going to focus mainly on the pink. We might here use the water brush just to bring it up to that top of the ribbon there so it looks like we've we've added some highlights. But then this is where I want to mix together a little bit of the pink and the sepia together. Get a bit deeper to put into the base. Sorry, the underside of the ribbon, that's what I was trying to say. Now if I come in again with some of that sepia there, I can use my water brush and I've still got some of that plummy tone on it. We can use that to just feather out there. I can come in underneath this edge and add a bit of shadow. Now I'm going to clean my brush and just soften that a little bit. So now by just using the two colours, you can see that we've added quite a bit of highlights and shades by how we've moved the colours around. So let's do the same on this side. Colour with pink. Give ourselves a bit of a highlight there and we might again add a bit of a highlight down there as well. I'll grab some of our mix. some sepia on. Now that's run a little bit so I'm just going to use my paper towel and just take that back a little bit. Now my brush is a little bit wet so I'm just taking some water off it so I can just pull that sepia tone out of it without it being too heavy. Okay, same thing with the centre there. Just dry my brush a bit. Just going to bring up a highlight. And then we can put in a bit of shadow. Just makes it a bit more interesting just to have highlights and shades happening. Now we've lost a bit of our pink there, haven't we? So let's pop a bit of pink back in as well. Okay, now I'll turn the card around again so I'm working at a nice angle for me. And I've got to look at where, if our light source is hitting here, what's going to be our brightest spot on our ribbons? Probably that edge there. So let's make that our little highlight. I'll just do the other one. I'll give that one a moment to dry a bit. So this time the highlight's going to be up on that side. Now you don't have to go to all this fuss. You can just colour it all in one colour if you want to. That's fine. But if you want to add a little bit more interest, it's fun to do that bit of blending. Now, I'm just going to go on to the, the next scarf and give that a bit more time to dry before I add in some shadows. So again, let's look for where we've got highlights, which is going to be those top edges. Now, if you find when you're doing your stamping, I've got a little spot there where I'm not completely in touch with the neck and this one's gone a little bit over. We could always get a product like liquid pearls or some little gems and add some on the scarf and going around to that spot and just filling in those little gaps. Similar to the way when I was doing the, um, the video with Miranda with using the jewellery set, um, we said if you were doing it on Greta, whose neck is a little bit thicker, 
You can still use the jewellery elements, but you just use a bit of liquid pearls or something just to fill in where it doesn't quite meet. I think that would have made more sense if, I, if you were watching the other video. <laughs> there you go, you gotta go and watch the other video. you've got to be careful because things can go very quiet when you start colouring because you just get involved in your colouring. We notice that when we're teaching classes that once everyone starts water colouring some the conversation stops and everyone just focuses on their colouring. It's wonderful. So I'm just looking around for the points that I think are the highest points and that's where I'm putting my highlight. Now let's go back to our bow and pop in some shadows. So I think we would have a shadow in underneath there. And one in underneath this side here. If you get too much, clean your brush, just push it back a little bit. And I think these bits need to be a little bit darker. If I'm not happy with the colour, I could come in and add some of the plum colour back into that. I think that's looking great. So it looks like the ribbon's really lifting off. So let's add a little bit of shading here as well. So we'll get some of our plummy tone and do the inside of the scarf on that side. Add a little bit of shadow. Whoa, way too much shadow. Okay, take it back a little bit. A little bit of shadow on this side. These colours are quite intense. You really don't need to add a whole lot. I think sometimes that hardest thing I find if I'm doing several colours is remembering which one I've got in my hand at the time so I don't accidentally put the colour on that I wasn't intending to use. That's a little bit much, I'm just going to push that back a little bit. And if that lifts out a bit of pink colour, add a bit of pink back in again. Okay, it just underneath there. And I think we're nearly done. Okay, now just pop your lids back on your brushes carefully so you don't, because they've got that lovely fine brush nib, you don't want to scrunch the bristles. So just pop the lids on carefully. Now I'm very happy with that one. So I've got a background, a base card here made with our premium smooth white card which is 300 GSM, so it's a good solid card for your base card. And I've just used some of the Jumbo Java, just direct to paper, just scruffed it around there. And that will make a lovely base card that will tone in with our hair tones and our sepia shading. So I'm just going to grab a knife to flick the edges of the tape up and we'll get that mounted up. you find you have to be at just the right angle for you to do this. Okay. So now making sure I've got Ashley up on the right side of the card. Now this is a 
um, A5 piece of card fold in half and I'm working on this piece of card which is our cotton blend cardstock and it's been cut to 9, 9.5 by 14 centimetres. So just looking at that I've got that nice and evenly placed, press it down and we're there. Now I'm thinking I might like to come in later and add a little bit more, add a few gems or something, but that's lovely just as it is. So that's Ashley and that's using the accessories, the elegant accessories. And as you see when you look at it, there's so many different looks you'd be able to get with our ladies adding in those bits. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed having some fun with Ashley. Um, it's great fun dressing her up a bit. She loves it. Um, hopefully you join me again next time for some more crafty adventures.